Good morning, folks. We've got news on Earth rotation, a strange event in China, top science papers, and the sun continues popping small CMEs, one likely to affect our solar wind. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star with numerous flinches, and then towards the end, an eruption from a small filament housed within the southern active region. There was also a solid-sized blast over the limb. You can see the ejecta leaving back there, and in 304 angstroms, you can see the density of the filament that released in Earth's direction. This CME is still small, like the previous ones on the Earth-facing disk, and while it isn't scary, it may give Earth a love tap. Of course, we're awaiting a couple other love taps from small CMEs. Those should be arriving here tonight and into the following days. Bigger love tap up next coming from space, although in terms of its cosmic brothers and sisters, this is just a little baby. They have detected the shortest gamma burst from what they think is the death of a star, and it is shaking up a bit their thoughts on how these processes work, and how many mergers versus stellar deaths they're actually seeing with the gamma burst catalog. Folks, the Ganymede Habitability Campaign continues. It's basically a planet. It's bigger than Mercury. It's got its own magnetic field. Its subsurface ocean holds more water than the Earth does, and for the first time, they have detected water vapor in its atmosphere. This likely pushes Ganymede up with Europa and Enceladus as the most habitable moons in our solar system. Up next, talk about something that should have a catch and release rule, or a catch and destroy rule. 33 15,000 year old viruses unlocked from a Tibetan glacier, 28 of them definitely new and not present in our world today. They want to bring them back for study. What could go wrong? Up next, we are heading out to the galactic center, the nucleus of our Milky Way. For those who don't know, it had its record outburst in 2019, and we've been covering the data on it since that time. And while it's only in the low wavelength range, it was the largest such flare event from the Milky Way core on record. More here on how they plan to detect even more subtle variations while putting the event in its astronomical place. Let's just hope it doesn't make a much bigger one because then you're talking galactic superwave and it would be much worse than the disaster cycle we think is coming up again here soon. Folks, we are back to the data dance for Earth's rotation speed. They keep bouncing back and forth from, we predict the fastest day of the year will be in October, to, no, we had our fastest day earlier in July. Now we're back to October with a prediction and a nudge quicker. Are they going for four data wipes in a year? We'll see that unfold this week. Lastly, on the event log, Folks, the Chinese UFO media is going nuts over these lights that accompanied the record flooding they just had. But observers, if there's one group out there who should know what these lights really are, it's this one. Those are unquestionably auroral signatures. There is no space weather that should have been strong enough to cause them, and certainly not at this latitude like this. It suggests a more powerful paradigm of global electric circuit connection in these storms up to the ionosphere, and also hints at the vulnerability of the ionosphere, as Earth's magnetic protection from this space energy is changing too, weakening. Lastly here, had dinner with some of the Observer Ranch long-term lot members in town. Everyone says hello, and we can't wait for next year when the ranch opens and we can have group events once again. We greatly appreciate your support. From anomalous Chinese aurora to the record Arctic lightning, this story is getting more shocking by the week. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>